Good morning, friends. Good morning, good morning, everybody. Um, so, uh, um, I've got an IG live that I'm going to be doing now with uh, Karabo Songo. Karabo and I have known each other for, wow, years actually. I've known Karabo for a really long time. And um, a quick intro before I, I bring him into the conversation. Karabo is one of the very few entrepreneurs I know who's actually survived uh, what many in their businesses would consider uh, just calamity. Like people, you know, he survived the kind of stuff that if it happened to many other people, you would just give up and never get back up again. So he's, he's got an incredible story of, of uh, resilience, a great story of, uh, of hope, a great story of constantly pushing himself, constantly pushing for his dreams, um, and constantly self-validating, because I think that's a big part of what it takes for us to do what we do. And I'm talking here specifically about all of us one percenters. I'm talking uh, specifically about all of us version ones, you know? Um, you know, a lot of us, I keep saying to people, we are version one. Uh, for a lot of us in our families, in our histories, in our townships, in our countries, there has never been a generation like us before. There's never been a generation that's pushed so many boundaries. There's never been a generation that's had these many opportunities, but also the, these many obstacles. There's never been a generation that's lived in a village that's so small and yet so big at the same time. So, so because of that, the, the template I think that our, our fathers and forefathers would have used in the world doesn't work anymore. Uh, so, you know, I, I call us version ones, right? Um, so I'm fascinated by guys who are version ones like Garabo and who push the boundaries of what's out there and who push the boundaries of what, what, what's possible and what can be done. So let me bring... Bring KN to this conversation, and uh, you know, I hope you guys can get some gems out of it. I hope you guys can get some knowledge out of it, and and I hope it, it allows you guys uh, some wisdom so that you can survive this time. My brother, how you doing? I'm very good, and you? Yeah, man. Yeah, lo lovely painting. Thank you so much. I I've got I've got my Fakudza one at the back. I was sitting on the other side <laughs> of my office. Who's uh, who's the artist that did that one? I have no idea. <laughs> the person who did my house. The person who did my house has all the answers. <laughs> Garabo, i got to tell you before we start, one of yeah. the things I find um, very interesting about you, my guy, is you work in an industry that is very um, pretentious, but you're not. You work in an industry with a lot of fluff, an industry with mm. a lot of bullshit, an industry with a lot of claims that aren't true, an industry with a lot of people who are... Um, they are masking themselves to the world. They're projecting something. And you, every time I talk to you, you're just so real. I'm just like, this nigga's so real. Every time we talk, I just walk away going, how the hell is this motherfucker so real all the time? <laughs> What's that? It must about? be a Limpopo thing. <laughs> 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 but, but seriously, I think uh, one of the nice things about, firstly, good morning to you. Yeah, and thanks. Good morning and to, to you, the brother. audience. And to you. I Cheers. think one of, one of the things that's uh, quite interesting and a lot of us from small towns around uh, uh, South Africa is just the concept of keeping your head down and working to actually achieve some meaningful success before you have the right to say anything. Mm -hmm. I just think that in any industry in South Africa right now, there's very little of that. There's very little of actually pursuing real success before you actually consider yourself successful. And that is in, in, on various levels, uh, from a money perspective, self-conquering, uh, real milestones within the sector that you operate in, before you actually, for lack of better words, open your mouth to teach other people. Yo, 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 my guy, that's huge. Where does that yeah. come from? Is that, a, is that just how you were raised or is that a, a set of values that you've just come into, into, into resonance with as you grew up? I think, I think it's, a, it's, you know, I hate to say it, but it's, a, it's my obsession with, uh, with paranoia. So I always say to my paranoid will survive. And purely because it's driven by fear. Yeah. So what if today you've got lukewarm success and you are projecting it as if it will exist forever and it doesn't exist tomorrow? So that's the fear element. 
The other side is that there are so many exceptional entrepreneurs in South Africa that are not in the limelight that if you really did your homework yeah. and you You'd knew how you, you yeah. would actually keep quiet yeah. <laughs> because yeah. you are doing very little compared to what exceptional individuals are doing out there. You know, so one of the things, and I, I resonate with, with that statement, right? Mm -hmm. Because so in my line of work, um, and also based on my history, I mean, you know, I was thinking the other day, I'm like, I'm 35 years old. I started working when I was 19. I'm like, geez, mm -hmm. that's a long, long time, you know? Yeah. And, and your comment, one of the things people will do when they try to criticize you is they use the timeline of their life, not your life. Yes. So, so they go, you know, well, you know, I went to varsity and, I, and then I had my first call center job when I was 27. How's this guy at this mm -hmm. age achieved this much? What they don't realize is for a lot of us, you spoke about people who come from a small town. I come from a tiny township, like a small, my township is mm. so small, you and I could walk through it in 20 minutes. You know, my township is so small. <laughs> sure. When they were mapping Gauteng, they were like, just put a dot there. Don't worry about them. They yes, 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 you know what yes, I mean? yes. But the thing about those townships, my guy, and how we were raised, I was raised in a time when the township was your parent. Your, mm. Not just your parents. Like, if your mm. neighbor saw you do something, your neighbor had as much right as your parent to scold you, to beat you, to correct you, to, to mm. parent you, right? Mm. I was also raised in a time where we were very communal. So the guys I grew up with, even to this day, mm. we were on a WhatsApp group, we're chatting. And these are, and, and, it, and it's a mindset. So when we come into Joburg, right, the first thing mm. that like, jolts us is, is just how uh, frivolous people are. Absolutely. Frivolous with, people are frivolous with everything. They're frivolous with their Absolutely. time. They're frivolous with their talent. They're frivolous mm. with their capacity. They're frivolous with their gift. And I'm like, yo, do you know where we come from? Like, do you know? Mm. Do you know? I rem I'll tell you an interesting story. I, I remember. <laughs> so I always say to people when I do my IG lives, I go, guys, I'm a, I'm a miser. Like, who was the type of guy doesn't? If I don't have to spend money, I am the worst person in the world. Like, yeah. after that, it's a true story. I once yeah. walked up and down the Champs Elysees, my guy, looking for the cheapest coffee shop because I was not <laughs> going to pay two euro fifty for a croissant. I worked it out. I was like, yeah. no, that's yeah. too much money. I'm not paying it, right? And 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 I remember my team were like, "Hi, man, we just got paid. What are you talking about?" Because that mindset never leaves you. So one yeah. of the things I'm blessed with over the years, I've built a phenomenal network of guys like you. And I just watch guys keep rising and I'm going, yo, oh, guys, yes, such a yeah. you know? But guys are quiet. Guys are quiet. So I must tell, you, so I must tell you a funny story. So I, I, get, I get a call from one of the banks and uh, uh, I'm sure you invest tech. So they've got this whole thing where they introduce uh, different individuals, they are different lines to each other. So I get, uh, I'm, I'm going to meet this young man uh, who's apparently worth about 300 million. He's 25 years old. The first thing he says, he decides to meet me at a Nando's in Polsov. Back then, when there was a Nando's in Polsov. So I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> Nando's, Polsov, ah, bro. <laughs> What's going on? The guy arrives, he's driving a Toyota Hilux. You know, and we sat in the Nando's. We had a very long two hour chat. He told me about himself. I told him about myself. And I remember that two hours fundamentally changed the way that I looked at first wealth creation and what it means to you individually and how it develops you the more you achieve it. Mm -hmm. And then, secondly, the need to literally. Stay, keep your head down and work because you have no idea what the Toyota Hilux driving next to you is packing. <laughs> wow. So, so yeah. Was so legit. it was, he was legit money. Yeah, it was legit. Legit. You know, it's yeah. just that I didn't identify with the idea that he was pitching to me. I mean, the guy wanted to open a network of clubs. Obviously, he's 25. He's wealthy. So I was just like, it's not a sustainable business, you know. I like you. I like your energy. I think you're going back yeah, so, 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 and also, and also the, 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 the other, the other thing that is also interesting about particularly essay 
is that a whole host of us are raised by largely very involved female figures in our lives, right? Very true. And uh, these female figures generally sacrifice a lot for us. That's right. You know, so, and in most black kids' life, it's actually more than one female figure involved. It's more than your mother. So you've got your mother, your aunt, etc. And these people take everything that they have and they, they sacrifice it for the greater good of the family, you know? Mm-hmm. And I've seen it, it's not just, it's just all over the country. It's like a thing that a lot of uh, households are female-led. And in leadership, it's kind of a very important lesson to learn and to mm-hmm. take out. And I often think about, even if my mom was a teacher and she had other side jobs, I often think leadership uh, principles I have learned from her in her being herself in everyday life. That's power, man. That's absolute power. So for everybody that doesn't know, you work in the advertising game. For as long as I've known you, you've always been in the advertising communications game. First question I want to ask you, right? You've been in the game a long time, Karabo. Um, Industries are cyclical. You and I know this. Economies are cyclical, right? In fact, you could actually, everything has seasons. Relationships have seasons, Mm -hmm. your health has seasons, your wealth has seasons, you know, there's the ups, the downs, there's, right? But but you, for me, have been able to stick it out through the seasons. And I gotta tell you, like, that's admirable. (laughs) Because I know know a lot of guys who talk a big talk, who drive a big drive, who wear a big suit, but they follow what I call the peaks of seasons, you know? And the peaks of industry. So they will go from one thing to another thing, to another thing, to another thing. As long as the next thing is booming, that's where they are. As mm. a consequence, they don't build anything, mm. right? They look like they build stuff. But if you, mm. if you double click, if you scratch beneath mm. the surface, you start going, mm. right? Um, and, 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 you know, so for me, that mindset is one of the things I wanted you to share with, you know, to share with the people who are joining us in this conversation around how have you been able to stick it out through the seasons? Because even in your mm. game, there were times when brands weren't spending. And then there were times mm. when only a few companies were dominating. And then there were mm. times when the new companies started dominating. Mm. And then there were times when the Cape Town click, what I call the Cape Town click, was all <laughs> over the work, signing up clients. Like if you had a white-owned agency from Cape Town with three, uh, you know, three kids just over 30 years old, who wore funky glasses and dressed a bit, you know, mm. funny, you could be closing mad accounts mm. because that's what the industry yeah. was buying into. And yeah. this whole time I'm watching, I'm like, Eman, hey, man, taco. God, I was just there. He's just like doing his thing. Consistency. <laughs> what's, what's that about, man? How come so, you've been able to, have, to stick it up? So maybe let me, you know, it's a, it's a very passionate subject matter you are raising. So the first thing, and I've learned this after running many, many companies. There is no such thing as the customer not buying. You have to have something that the customer wants to buy. Mm-hmm. And uh, when, when management teams say that uh, customers are not out there shopping, what they really mean is that our current offering is in matching their needs. So you look, at, you look at COVID right now and you ask yourself, how have people adjusted their product and offering to meet the needs of the customer where they're at today? You know, there are some guys out there who have quadrupled their turnover. It's a fact. That's right. You know, That's right. companies that are just going out of nowhere and shooting through the roof. It's just not you. And also you must just learn to accept when it's just not you. <laughs> and stop making excuses about it. It's not yeah. you. Yeah. You just don't have the answers. And it's a very honest and very realistic kind of position to get to. It's not you. You don't have the answers. I mean, I watched Romeo Kumalo the other day, uh, an investor guideline deck, and he often talks about when that question comes, 
So what's special about your service and how entrepreneurs fumble around it and how they try and say, and how they give flimsy answers, etc. So I have clear cut questions, right? Uh, answers. The other thing that um, uh, you need to actually really master is to begin to understand how you build asset of value within the category that you play in. And what most people are only focused on is their product offering, right? Not the rest of the value chain. So how it does win, for, for example, is that they leave the service offering, they focus on procurement methods that outsmart their competitors. I mean, we see this all the time with global networks going in into head offices globally and trying to sell a global solution to clients, you know? So they are not necessarily going into every country. They are just saying, we are going to organize ourselves as a group. We are actually going to go into this client environment and give them group buying discount. So the group buying discount becomes the USP instead of the service. And mm. there are many strategic ways of, of getting into client environments. Group buying is one of them. Efficiencies is another. Uh, customer, one of my favorites is customer experience, right? So uh, you have this service. You've got this fantastic team of people that deliver the service. But most management teams are not focused on customer experience. So every single day, what is the magic that your customer who's paying you top dollar is getting from your company or from your offering? So we often, often yo, startups yo, yo, are very boss. good, right? Yeah. So the, startup, the startups are very good because they're excited, they're energetic, they get a new big client, and they make it magical. But over time, as they grow, they then start literally filtering down and not focusing on, on, on that. Um, so it becomes, it becomes a, a very bad experience with a good offer. So that's that. And obviously, the, the number one thing is really be a specialist in your category. I have seen people on LinkedIn call themselves specialists. But when you sit down and you really question them about their knowledge about the industry, their knowledge about innovation, their knowledge about the economy, you know, it's not enough for you to know about your industry. Your clients are operating within an economy. And you got to know as much as possible about the environment. Knowledge about your customer's competitive set. Uh, very important, you know. So that you're always speaking at the point of need where your customer is. Your customer's job is not to educate you about their industry. It's to find the best possible service provider. And that's a really informed service provider, you know. So when you pick up, when you, when you answer their phone and their call, have you seen what your competitor launched this morning? And I'm seeing a little bit of ramblings in the market. I've seen how much their stock market has climbed up in the last few hours. You want to meet and talk about it, you know? That's a, that's a, that's a connected service provider. Excuse me. But I mean, uh, sorry about that. I think, um, yo, man, first of all, this is turning out to be a whole masterclass. Like, you know, I do these online classes, right? And no, I think I, that's, I your, that's you your arena. I'm gonna, now I'm going to put you under pressure now because I hadn't told you this, but we're busy. We've been conceptualizing season two of the masterclasses. Mm. One of the things I said to my team was, I said to them, look, there is no well of knowledge that doesn't run dry if it doesn't replenish itself. And mm. I said, I feel like that's where I'm at. So mm. I said, season two of the masterclasses ain't going to be me. We're going to get guys like mm. you We'll put a thousand mm. entrepreneurs in the room and we'll get it, you know, because there's so much I think that we can share and there's so much that I see people are hungry for the knowledge, right? Mm. I think when we talk about distorted value systems and distorted value sets, one mm. of the things re uh, value systems and value sets get distorted is because you and I, who live mm. by the alternative value systems, are quiet about mm. it and we don't share it. Mm. And so young people coming up, new entrepreneurs coming up, all they see is the top Shayela value system. And so they think yes. that's what it means to be an entrepreneur. You know, yeah. it's, the, it's the fast, it's the bling. The things you mm. just said, my guy, mm. I, 15 years or more in business, there are things you're saying that I know 
mm. but I, I, I just relearned them again. Like my brain just went, actually, you're dead right. That's situational blindness that a lot of us get into when you run a business. And that situational blindness is when, you know, the situational blindness is when you come into an environment knowing what you know, and you start executing on what you know, that you forget that the environment itself is changing, and you need to change as the environment changes. Do you know what I mean? But Busi, but Busi uh, just to interject there, most people don't realize the power of routine. So unless you build powerful routines around you, you can't be brilliant on the daily basis. No one remembers to be brilliant. But if you build routine, you can build routine that makes you brilliant. And, and you know, whenever I start working with any team and they start reporting into me, I don't want to know anything about them. I just want to know, guys, present to me what your daily routine is like. And in routine, you'll find people's weaknesses every single day. They don't practice. You, 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 you can't wake up and be brilliant. You've got to build powerful routines into your space. So I want to chat about, um, I mean, you mentioned earlier on about the, the fact that I've been in a position where I've lost uh, everything yeah. before. Yeah. And whenever I talk about this story, I talk about um, the first uh, kind of, I had the lawsuits within the company that was doing very well. And actually, in fact, I had won an accolade at Entrepreneur of the Year before I lost the whole business. <laughs> How, how's the irony? <laughs> the irony. The, 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 the glory comes before the fall. <laughs> so anyway, um, I, so I, I remember specifically I had just uh, bought a property for the new businesses expended on 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 it you know and i made the mistake firstly of buying my own offices and property so so wait let me, for context for context oh I my remember god you and i'm meeting at the mug and bean and you were telling me <laughs> you were like i've just bought a property and i was like, oh. and I was like eh, 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 eh. Oh. Guys, we're out here buying property. no so it's not it's not an achievement to buy your own offices <laughs> because when you need to scale down and you're in trouble you can't get out quickly so oh, so yeah. so it's a it's a big issue and one of one of the the big things that kill businesses is big leases when the revenue starts to run down Woo! right that you can't Woo! get out of so so this is the kind of thing so anyway so i'm so now i so all the problems are being presented to me by my finance team and my attorneys. And I come to the point where every, you know, I always say that the, you only get one chance to clean up your mess. And when you're getting advice that your business is gone, you must take that advice and close that business. Now, even SARS, has got, uh, you know, reckless trading. So when a business is doing so badly that you continue trading, they can even come after you personally yeah, because right. you yeah. knew that the business was doing badly and you continue to trade. Exactly. And I remember I had to finish off all my projects and notify all my clients and staff that I'm going to actually be moving on with this business. And... After the lawsuits were done, and uh, there was one day where I woke up, yeah. and I realized that I was six million rand in the red. Mm -hmm. And I remember mm -hmm. the first uh, two days, I actually sat in my bedroom, and I left, and I never left my room. I just literally woke up, opened my eyes. And I couldn't physically get myself out of bed to oh my God. face this to face this issue oh because God. it when you are when you are in, when you are so linked as an entrepreneur to your business it is both your emotion your psychological state of being and your reason for your genesis core out there in I, the environment. I get it. It's your, it's your reason, it's the reason you exist, you know what I mean? Absolutely. So when you lose your reason for existence, what saves you, my this friend, is, is routine. 
Because routine does not need your flimsy emotions to proceed. Routine is routine. To do the work, you ultimately get to a good place. And I remember thinking to myself that the first routine that I'm going to continue is how to actually cleanse my mind every single morning to make myself believe that I'm not a failure, mm. right? So I've got a bit of a meditation in the morning and that meditation comes from different things. And uh, now I've just elevated it to actually listening to all kinds of uh, lectures from various business schools around the world mm. over their videos. That way I can do it and I can run at the same time to save time, you know? So my morning starts with a power-packed punch of knowledge and guys who have actually done it, right? Mm -hmm. And how to maintain and how to rebuild myself for every day. The second thing is how to face the truth about the business and where I'm at. And I find that management teams and even young professionals, they, they are very iffy about facing the truth about themselves or their businesses, you know? So you, you're sometimes in a meeting and you are listening to people about the fact that you are actually not even lying to me. You are lying to yourself. Mm. You know, why are we having these meetings? Often I have to end meetings because people are lying. So what you got to do is you have to absolutely be blatantly truthful with yourself. Don't distort the truth. That's the only way you're going to get results. And then obviously, ultimately, the third most important step, take action daily towards small achievements so that you actually start eating the problem one step at a time. Mm -hmm. Tell me something. I mean, again, masterclass, right? But so, so how did you, this, 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 there's a subject matter I want to tackle, uh, Garabo, and with your permission, I want to find the right yeah. runway to engage on the subject matter. I have at times mm. in my life and times in my career where I'm on the cover of a magazine, but I'm going through hell. And the world <laughs> is celebrating yeah. you. And the world yeah. is celebrating you. And you, almost want to, and you almost want to cry. You almost want to go, do you guys know what the fuck I'm going through? Do you know, do you know my reality, right? Yeah. So at a mental level, how do you disconnect your reality from the market perception of you? And there's a reason I'm asking you this question. Mm. Because uh, sentiment, uh, confidence, particularly for you and I who deal with uh, institutional customers, is based on their perception of your stability. So mm. a big corporate is going to give you a big contract when they perceive that you're good, that you're okay, right? Mm. So you can't wear your pain in your face mm. as you go out into the world. You've got to find a way of, of, like, of like, you know, just, just being, being at a space. And I remember I was on the cover of a magazine called Franchise Something. Man, mm. like... My guy, I was this close. I had SARS breathing down my neck. I had international mm. clients that weren't paying. I had mm. a staff member that had embezzled some money because my systems were poor. Yeah. I had a management team that was thinking working for me is the fun part. You know, mm. I was like, guys, working for me is not the prize. The work we do is the prize. So you don't yeah. need to go, I got the job, now I can relax. You got to do the work. Mm. And by God's grace, I was able to work through that period and I think about a year later, I was on the cover of, of Destiny magazine, uh, which I think was probably the best-selling cover of Destiny Man. Um, and, and Onke and I met there, and you know, she's since become a good friend. Mm. But it, it took like 12 months, and my life had, had changed. The question I'm asking mm. you, and I'm going along about way of asking the question, how did you manage what you show the world versus dealing with your reality every day? So, so I, I remember reading somewhere that the equilibrium point for high impact entrepreneurs is to treat compliments pains or so 
So you sorry, draw, say that again. The line got cut off. There. You paused it. So you so said the you equilibrium need, point. You need the equilibrium point is you need to treat the complex and the, on the same level. Oh man, this is power. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. So what you what you are experiencing when you are on the cover of a certain publication which apparent most probably was shot either at the time you're doing well or doing bad anyway <laughs> so um you almost are emotionally feeling like you owe the people the success and those emotions that you are feeling are brought on by yourself so this whole entire psychological battle that you are having it's you debating and wrestling yourself down no one has come to you and said you owe this because ultimately that is the nature of business you know people complain that business is tough but business is a sport without all these dynamics it wouldn't be business so what you are describing to me is the normal order of business who who must who must deal with these issues that you don't have to deal with <laughs> it's you <laughs> that's what that's so what, what then lends you on the cover <laughs> what you're saying is you're not special chief like no to spare you chief. the punches you're gonna get chief. them too and and you've got remember and you've got other uh, other other items that are actually keeping you and dragging you back chief. you've got your own equality issues <laughs> you know so so <laughs> <laughs> so you've got to understand that uh, uh, if not you, who must go through those things? Yeah. Who, who do you want to have such, such problems? Yeah. Who do you want to have that client fire them except you? All these things, who, who do I want to have the big lawsuits to wipe out their company except for me? And, and, it's, 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 and, and I always say it's funny because a lot of the times a lot of people become religious when they are doing badly and they go to church and they talk about God and etc. But the Bible is one of the most powerful business books in my opinion that I've ever Fact. read. If not the and most powerful. If you, if you follow those principles to the core, I believe that most people can be successful. But most people actually don't follow the principles in the Bible. Because one of them, one of the big principles that are there is that you must accept the cards that you are dealt with in life mm. and build towards them. You must accept that the principle of infinite wealth being, being available. So the, the many successes of many people doesn't mean that your, when your time comes, they'll be less available or there'll be less of a platform for you to be successful on. In other words... In other words, there's so much going around that when your time comes, you're going to be okay. You may even get double the principle. That's incredible. Or double, Everybody's or asking as, about... As my, as my brothers and sisters would say, double your portion. <laughs> 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 you may get double your portion, my friend. Hallelujah, brother. <laughs> Everybody's asking about the point you made about the equilibrium. You were saying something about the equilibrium? So, so the point is, you must be able to get to a point where the way you treat compliments and the way you treat complaints psychologically is on the same level. So there's a beautiful poem called If by Rudyard Kipling, and I don't know if you've read it. Uh, if you haven't, I'm going to send it to you after this. Immediately please do, after this, please do. I'm going to yes. bother you after this to do this masterclass, but check it out. Rudyard yeah. Kipling on this poem is writing a poem to his son. Mm. And, uh, and please read it, you know, to say son or daughter. But he's writing this poem to his son. And he's trying to explain to his son what it means to be a man. And he says mm. to his son, and my man, I got to tell you, like, I first read that poem maybe 10 years ago, and I didn't get it. Mm. And then I went through a, a difficult time about three years ago, and for the first time, I got it. Like, you know, mm. do you know how, you'll understand this. Do you know how there are some pieces of literature or some pieces of wisdom that won't land on you until you're at a stage in your life where you're ready to receive them. Do you know Absolutely. what I mean? Absolutely. That's why Absolutely. they say when the student is ready, the teacher will emerge. Like the, the knowledge, yes. the thing about knowledge I think people don't appreciate 
is there's actually no such thing as new knowledge. All so, knowledge. So, so if I were to jump in there, and, and yeah. you, keep on, you keep on using this phrase that uh, at the time I was going through a difficult time, right? Nelson Mandela said it the best. Jesus, after they've climbed the mountain and they get to the top of the mountain, that there are many more mountains to climb. Yeah, yeah. We are always conquering ourselves and various aspects of our lives till we are ultimately Absolutely. at the end. So this ideology that individuals and companies have hmm. That we will get to a point of comfort does not exist. It's like, it's like being a drug addict and chasing a high. It, it just doesn't exist. We will always yeah. be at a point of high performance required. And we need to be comfortable with that. So, uh, you know, when I started my VC firm, um, so here's another thing that I think, and, and, and I'll, uh, let me just, so let me, let me finish. So in the poem, uh, Rudyard Kipling, Here's mm. a part in the poem where he say, he's saying to his son, he says, if you can meet victory and defeat and treat both imposters just the same, mm. then you'll be a man, my son. Absolutely. And I never got that line because I was like, why would he say victory and defeat are imposters? Why would victory mm. and defeat be imposters? You mm. work towards victory and you run away from defeat. Why would it be an imposter? And then mm. I got it. What he was trying to say to his son was, if you can achieve or lose and recognize that neither achieving nor losing is who you are. It's something that's mm. happened. Then you'll be a man. Otherwise, your life is constantly going to be defined by what you're achieving, who you're hanging out mm. with, what you're accumulating. Do you know what I mean? I was like, that's so powerful. And, and I think that all of us in the end, when that question, who are you, right? Mm. Uh, I believe that we are always becoming and will ultimately only answer that uh, question of who we are with our obituaries because we are always becoming we are always becoming better oh, my I, God. May, I may after many years of being a capitalist which is which is most unlikely <laughs> become <laughs> obsessed <laughs> become obsessed with conquering myself spiritually and I don't owe anyone to continue on the business journey, you know. Mm -hmm. I can choose that life for myself, you know. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it, it's interesting. And, and it's interesting also the various spaces that you get to when you are on the entrepreneur journey. I mean, mm -hmm. a lot of guys now are even asking around the fact that um, a lot of us who are in business tend to work out a lot, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. It's because the only way to deal with the level of stress Exactly. And the level of performance that you need, the level of 16-hour days, etc. You can't be an unhealthy person and operate at an optimum level exactly. uh, and expect best results, you know, because you, you need to go out there, you need to keep your body healthy, you need to be in shape, you need to show that the high demands that are there, you can actually meet them. And it's, you know, it's, it's interesting what you're saying, because... It's not just that. And by the way, Brave Group SA has just joined in, which I know is your company. Uh, so everybody go check out Brave Group SA. That's uh, Karabo's business. But it's not just that, right? It's not just the whole, um, your body. But it's, what people don't realize is it's a full 360. So Absolutely. you spoke about how you wake up in the morning and the fact that you start consuming intellectual content that makes you, that makes you intellectually stimulated and richer. Mm. So a lot of people spend their lives living into the ordinary, but they're expecting extraordinary results. Mm. So getting, you know, something like people don't read. Yeah. And, and, and when they're watching stuff, they're watching, you know, entertainment content, not infotainment content. Absolutely. And then they're wondering, and then they're wondering why they're not making better decisions or they're wondering why they're not moving into a, di a different level of their life. And it's purely because their habits, their routine are at the level of their life that they're at. So, Ambition actually is Absolutely. not what's going to get you there. Your Absolutely. comment, and I love that, it's routine that's going to get you there, right? No, routine, routine is the stuff of legends, man. Routine is the stuff of legends. And if we think about, I mean, somebody may take their, most of our parents, grandparents had very simple jobs. Mm -hmm. They went to work every day. They were either teachers, nurses, etc. Very mm -hmm. simple jobs, right? 
And people often ask the question, how did they manage to support us as a family on mm. such small salaries? Mm. And the answer is their powerful routines mm. that they followed for 40, mm. 50 years. You know, they never went out and spent expensively. They always had to work on time mm. so, so that powerful. they can perform and not get fired. So they, they retained their jobs. Mm. They always tried to improve themselves. And their power of consistency was unparalleled. That's yeah. how they managed to take a small little income and do the stuff of legends with, you know. Mm -hmm. So if you can't respect that principle, now knowing what we know now as young professionals, that it's important to drive uh, even the little that you have. You have to be disciplined with that. So when the big monies come, you can also be disciplined with that. It's a, it's a you know. It's that kind of it's that kind of a, a, a vibe, you know. Uh, yeah. And it's and and it's funny because uh, even in my own office, if I think about it now, I remember when we we're moving into our building. I often, I've never had a friend at the office, so it's a funny story that I always tell all my associates. <laughs> I've never had a friend at the office. It's part of my routine. I go to the office to work. I don't do small talks in the office. Actually, so much so that now my own office in my building is in the conference center. So you literally have to, like, if you are coming to my office, it's for work purposes, you know. So I, I build my routine and my consistency around being intentional. Like my personal friends know not to call me or not to WhatsApp me during business hours. I've communicated very clearly with them. You know, sure. so it's it's small little things that you you actually realize how much steals from us each and every single day that we are not controlling, no. and we ask ourselves why we don't achieve a lot. Let me let me ask you. There's a there's a there's a difficult question I want to ask you, but I, I want to find a way to ask it so that people joining us in this conversation understand it. And the reason it's a difficult question is mm. because it's one of those questions that unless you have been through it, the, the question will sound academic and the answer will sound academic. Yeah. Building a team. Man. So, <laughs> you know, so first, you go through, you lose your first business. I think there, yeah, there's yeah. a big story to be told there around how you manage those relationships, manage the people who yeah. work for you, manage exiting those relationships. But also, I know this about you, and you've never said it to me, but I know you well enough to know this to be true. You are genuinely not concerned with being liked. Like, no, you don't wake no. up in the morning going, people are going to like no, me. You go, no. I just need the work done. Right? <laughs> um, I, I, I have a passion for not wanting for, for that particular point. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's, and it's yeah. um, because I think, I think that, I think what I call, <laughs> I call it the Instagram syndrome. We live in a generation today where unless you're getting likes, you as an individual are validated. And people don't know how to draw the line between likes that you're getting from strangers and wanting to be liked by people that you know. And I've always said this, if you study any leader worth their salt, one of the things you realize as a principle is that leader didn't care about being liked. It doesn't, you could go as far back as, you know, the, the beginning of time. Study any leader that's achieved anything. These are the people we talk about today. If I mention their names, everybody mm. would know who they are. I could go as far back as Cleopatra and, you know, mm. Marco Polo, to Martin mm -hmm. Luther King and jump forward to today. People who are achieving anything don't care about being liked. Mm -hmm. But you have been able to build a business and build teams around you to deliver the value of what you have in your mind. How on earth have you managed to do that? Because I think that's probably the neatest trick that people need so, to learn, how to build teams. So the interesting thing is that in... in in the South African, just even, even globally, mm. there is a very little conversation about the leadership style of leading from behind. So the business mm. world and various economies have fantastic people that most people have never heard about. And mm. these people are behind the backbone of a lot of global companies. Mm. So what has tended to happen is that a number of big names of people who are either founders or long-term CEOs of large organizations have been at the forefront and have been well-documented and been written about. But there are a number 
of fantastic individuals that have led from behind and have been the backbone of some of the most successful organizations that um, the world has ever seen. And mm -hmm. I take inspiration from that. There's something extremely empowering about one, validating people's own beliefs in themselves and then mm, sub mm, 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 mm. And mm. that is definitely one of the most powerful ways to quickly build phenomenal teams, you know? Mm. And, and not only trusting them when it's safe to do so, sometimes also trusting them when it's unsafe to do so and giving them a chance to fail. Mm. And with your resources and your backing and learning together as a team. Obviously, this has to be accompanied with a very clear and very strong vision for yourselves as a group. And having, uh, we often call it um, very tough conversations about mm. how we all actually develop one another. So mm. uh, I'm, very, I'm very big on, on, on uh, uh, um, I'm very big on feedback. And mm. feedback must be given clearly in articulation, preferably in writing, and most importantly, very quickly. You know, mm. uh, our human capital executive um, level always, she's always banging on about this whole thing on how we teach teams to really drive feedback quickly mm. and articulate articulate what it is you know after mm -hmm. a meeting we don't we're not gonna wait for another session etc we sit you down we did not like xyz boom 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 would you like me to put it to you in writing so that next time you get confused you can read my email again mm -hmm. you know so and, it's, it's, and, it's that kind and, of thing and, and and you're and you're happy to let people go who don't fit with the culture of what you're doing Oh, I specialize in that, uh, letting people go. <laughs> oh, that's my specialty, my friend. Uh, and, 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 and I'll tell you why. And I'll tell you why I specialize in that. You cannot allow anybody in your organization to continue to steal the momentum of the team and no. the momentum of the broader company. Once you have no. identified the thief, the thief must go. It's, it's literally that simple. That person is stealing our, our, our speed towards progress. It's literally no. that simple. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> I don't know how to put it. <laughs> how else to put it? There's a thief in the company. <laughs> so a lot of people watching in on this conversation are panicking right now. And they're panicking right now yeah. because of where we're at. They're panicking right now because of what's going on. Yeah. Um, yes, last night, you and I were going to do this last night. And, and I think you correctly said to me, dude, move this thing to tomorrow because we don't want to be competing with fellow South Africans, right? Yes, yes, um, yes. <laughs> and, and, other, and other types of content. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, somebody might be on a live, you know, with things that need milk. And we all know. Yeah, what yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> but um, you know, I hear you. I think, I think, um, you know. So for me, when I called you up, I was like, man, I, I, at a distance, have been privileged enough to observe your journey, and 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 you don't know this, but you're one of the, you know, you're one of the brothers that I look at and I go, because the other thing about this thing that we do, and you and I both know this, is this thing is very lonely, and it's lonely because Absolutely. there's no template for us. There's actually no template. Like, so first of all, because we are, you know, before, because we are alpha, we have this idea that we're conquering the world. Very few of us can humble ourselves to get on the phone and go, MJ, I've got this problem. Give me some advice. How do you think I should solve it, right? So one of the things I do is there's brothers that I look at from far and I go, that brother's doing it, that brother's doing it, that brother's doing it, that brother's doing it. I, might, I don't need the details, but I'm watching the template and I'm just, I'm trying to learn from that template. Your ability to bounce back, man, for me, is simply inspirational because, you know, you've been able to lose, come back, and you, you literally bounce back. And now you're even at a higher level than you were you were Absolutely. before that. And I know that there are a lot of people who life mm. smacks them once and they never get back up again. Like, mm. they, that, that, because you and I know there's a beautiful uh, Sylvester Stallone 
quote where he's talking to his son in Rocky Five and he's just lost everything. And his son is busy hanging out with bad people. Mm. And Sylvester Stallone goes to see his son and he says to him, you, me, or nobody's going to hit as hard as life. Right? Mm. Somebody watching this right now who's getting hit by life. What are the yeah. three things in your mind that you would say to them just to keep at the back of their minds that might give them that ability to bounce back? And if I heard you correctly, one of them is develop strong routines. <laughs> but what so would you say? I, you know, I, I in my head, as you ask, what are the top three, three things? I, and I've got uh, the, the Simba movie, you know, when they lift Simba up. Remember who you are. Yeah. <laughs> remember. <laughs> Simba, remember who you are. And we had a good, you are my son. A good laugh. And the one true. And then we thought, we thought, oh my God, what a cute, what a cute animated movie. <laughs> Meanwhile, all, all of us adults are struggling to remember who we are. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, but it's such a powerful, it's such a powerful thing to you when you've got a vision for yourself and when you are convinced about who you are in the journey and you get a huge setback that completely compromises you within your own environment and compromises you in public there's a tendency to doubt the vision for your original state of who you are mm. So the first thing that you must do is you must never change the destination, but you can change the way that you get there. Mm. So if you are utterly convinced about what is it that you're going to develop um, and what it is that you're going to deliver for the world, you've got to truly, truly believe it internally and get rid of insecurities. Mm -hmm. And know your insecurities very well because they will show up mm -hmm. and find ways to manage those insecurities. Mm -hmm. um, and in an active manner, approach your insecurities. Your insecurities must know you are on the prowl. They must mm -hmm. hide from you, you know, mm -hmm. and you must manage them. Mm -hmm. And in that way, you will keep on distilling who you truly are for yourself. Mm -hmm. So that's the first mm -hmm. thing. So the second thing is that um, you then have to specialize. I mean, a lot of people call themselves specialists, but, and by the time you really double-click down, you don't even need to go even further. They're not specialists. You truly need to be a true specialist and, 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 and understand and have very deep knowledge and relationships around the category that you operate in. And you speak about the fact that I've managed to bounce back. I didn't only manage to bounce back by myself. Every time I get a huge setback, the amount of support that I get from the industry and from business in general of people who rebuild me because they truly believed in, believed in my mission is mm. absolutely crazy. If you go off the scene, people ask, where are you? Where are you? And, yeah. and when people then begin to spread the rumors, when people begin to uh, say certain things about you, when people try to challenge the, the, really the fabric of who you are, there will be people that you have never even met that will defend you in important conversations mm -hmm. with important people, mm -hmm. you know? It's purely because you did what you did so honestly and with such integrity that you don't, you don't even realize how many supporters you are actually building in the environment, mm. right? Mm. Then mm. the last thing is there is a truly no environment for small dreams, really. I, I just don't get it. I think that what we need to do is when we define ourselves from a business context, we truly need to have audacious goals. Mm. And our audacious goals need to reflect in the way we go on about our daily missions. Mm -hmm. Because truly, the people that truly succeed and find alternative ways are truly chasing audacious goals. Mm. And that's really what creates the following, you know? Mm. Um, mm -hmm. And some may argue that uh, people only 
come to you and acknowledge you once you reach top heights. It's not true. Mm. Every single day, through excellent routine and through work, we are building followers. And those followers ultimately become clients. I love it, man. I mean, easily, these conversations that I keep having, they just keep, they're like, these are mega. So uh, mm. I'm going to hit you up after this. Um, I, would, I, would, I would love it. I yeah, couldn't I don't know what hear you. There. We got cut off. Yeah, there go. yeah. There we go. So you were saying so that I, I lost you when you're saying that you're gonna call me up. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna hit you up after this. I would love for you. Right. I I think again my my comment. You know, you you made the comment earlier about about wealth and how much riches there are out there, and how you should never you should never ever in your life come at things with a mindset of scarcity. The the idea that if if Karabo has it, then I can never have it. But yes. actually recognize that Karabo having it might mean that you're going to double your portion. And mm. so, you know, for me, uh, by God's grace, I've been able to build an incredible base with phenomenal, you know, followers and, and people. And, and I just keep going. I just keep going. Guys, Lynn, now I'm still learning as I go. Yeah. So, so as I learn, how about we all learn together? And Absolutely. I recognize that there are guys like you who have incredible amounts of wisdom that we can put out there and help people through parts of their journeys. Again, I repeat, because we are version one. A lot Absolutely. of the things we, like a lot of the things we are doing, not now when I started, there was no template for what I was doing. Yeah. So, so, and not only was there no template, but there was no network. So I, could, I didn't have a place I could go with people I could hit up and go, you know, a, a base, I'll give you a simple basic thing, a simple, simple, simple basic thing. Right? Mm. Right? I didn't have a place I could go where I was like, where do I file PAYE? It's like a simple, yeah. basic question. Okay? Oh, oh yeah. okay. So I've registered with, so how do I make this payment? Or, mm. wait, I'm looking for a service provider to do X, Y, and Z. How do I mm. evaluate, you know, evaluate whether or not they can do the work? Or, um, hold on, my business is growing now. And mm. actually, there's things that need to be done in the business that I don't know. Where do I go now? Who do I talk to? Who do I ask for help? How do I... The, the interesting one that I would love, I would love to uh, educate as many South Africans on is when do I close the business that I currently have? I think that that's a conversation <laughs> that we need to have. When, when must I know that it's not working and we must close this before I either get into a lot of debt or I destroy people's lives? That, but that I, is a very important a one. <laughs> my man, that is a tough one, brother. That's a tough one. <laughs> we must have those conversations. When do I close this thing down? It's, it's, it's important to have that yo, conversation. Yo, yo, yo. I mean, that's you know, We must time. just have a fully fleshed conversation about that. And one, I'm interested to see if the tickets will sell. Two, who will come? And then three, who will apply the, who will apply to say that, when is it time to close? You know, no one wants to have those conversations, but they are very important, you know, from a business rescue process to liquidation, to tying down a, a business properly. Mm, 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 mm. I mean, I, I still think, I remember when you and I had our conversation yesterday in terms of our cheat sheet mm. and I was saying to you, people say, excuse me, people say close a business. Do you know what that means? Yo. Okay. Chief, I want to give an example. Someone says close a business. Okay. What do you mean? There's a lease that I've signed up. There are people that I've employed. There's furniture that I've bought that's sitting in my assets. There might have been other assets that I've got out there that I'm in marketing and operation. Then there are the tax and of, uh, statutory obligations that I still have. Mm -hmm. Then there's the, you know, the directors registered with SIPSI. There might be other support. Then there are the customers that we deal with every single day. And he's like, do you know, managing the wind down of a business itself is a whole different exercise. And I don't think that you can Absolutely. manage the wind down of a business and continue to try and do something on the side. I don't see that as possible. Absolutely. But, but anything, anything is possible. 
if you've got a very clear cut plan on 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 uh, on how to do it and i see everybody i mean is commenting about uh, uh, when to close the business never say die going on look the torture the torture will send a clear message is how to avoid torture really that's the conversation how to avoid torture and interestingly enough one of the most important assets that we all have whether in business or as a growing individual is our credit status right yeah so the ability to access a vast uh, uh, um, amounts of credit at any point in time in order to do stuff so how to also protect that in the context of closing businesses down and cleaning up a failed project etc very very important you know mm -hmm. but but those conversations people almost like to have it uh, in in the problem itself not prior mm -hmm. or as some uh, english graduates may call it prior <laughs> <laughs> all right my brother thank you for your time i'm going to hit all you right. up after this where do, where, right, where cool. do people reach you if they need to find you no i mean uh, just karabosongo uh, i'm i'm available on all platforms um, and yeah, man, I, I like to I like to have uh, conversations, but I always like to be clear. I'm not a good mentor, so I don't. I, I think that the mentor and mentees, the relationship uniquely find themselves. Um, and uh, if anything, every single day, anything you hear, anything you come across, anything you read, that is the form of mentorship that I believe in personally. Yeah. And thank you. you every thank you everyone for joining us this morning. And let's make the economy great. There's a lot of good things going on out there. One last question. I promise this is my last one. Yeah. How do you get a beard like that? I've been trying to get a beard. <laughs> this is all a I got. Connecting, a I connecting got. beard. <laughs> <laughs> All you right, know, brother, I appreciate you, man. Ma male grooming is important, Vusi. You can't just grow <laughs> a few little sprinkles. You gotta grow the whole thing. <laughs> Cheers, Thanks, man. Bye. Cheers, boy.